Fifth. Fifth. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, in any case, uh, just to give you a little background on David Trogger. David uh, is a retired professor emeritus from uh, College of Natural Resources at Virginia, Te Virginia Polytechnic Institute and uh, a 38 year federal career, Department of Interior. Hmm. And uh, this is a topic I've been after him specifically to talk about, and that's having to do with species extinction. And so the topic, as you can see, is humanity's global curse. So uh, this is not one kind of a meeting where everybody's going to end up saying, yay, bravo. Uh, it's going to be very sobering. So uh, David, please take it away. Everybody welcome David Parker. David. Good morning. Well, it's great to be here on a glorious spring morning, and uh, it's uh, I'm glad that uh, you've, you've come out from today. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you know pr presenting this talk. A um, little bit about my background, <clears throat> beyond what Lee uh, uh, did in the introduction. Uh, I spent. Uh, uh, most of my career as a research scientist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Department of Interior. Um, and I started out as a field biologist uh, studying uh, waterfowl. And uh, about, uh, I had a, a really a productive uh, uh, few years as a field biologist. Uh, and then my career started going downhill. Uh, I was a <clears throat> uh, recruited to be the assistant director of the Northern Prairie Wildlife Research Center at Jamestown, North Dakota. And I did that for four years. Um, and uh, then I was uh, recruited to go to the uh, uh, Washington office as chief of the Division of Wildlife Research. I did that for uh, four years. And uh, then I uh, was appointed uh, director of the Patuxent Wildlife Research Center in uh, Laurel, Maryland. And uh, I was there a total of 32 years in, in uh, the Department of Interior. And then I retired uh, from uh, public service and uh, spent uh, 10 years as a professor at the uh, Virginia Polytech Institute and State University. Uh, where I developed a, a natural resources program, graduate program, um, and uh, retired in 2010 and went back to, uh, uh, moved back to uh, uh, civilian life. And I've been involved in uh, environmental activism, I guess, ever since that. But I went through that background because <clears throat> What I'm going to introduce the talk uh, in the in the early part of the, my talk is that I had an opportunity, uh, both as uh, or as as a uh, the in all of these positions, uh, to uh, be involved with uh, endangered species, and with uh, I I supervised and 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 was involved in administrative roles with uh, many of the scientists working on endangered species. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but uh, first of all, <clears throat> uh, this topic has come up because uh, uh, I wanted to know whether you have been paying attention to what's happening to our non-human life forms uh, with which we share the planet. This is uh, my uh, fifth representation. The first uh, uh, the first talk I gave here, and I think many of you were here for the talk I gave on Too Little Too Late, Human Overpopulation and Climate Disruption back in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I gave a talk on uh, sustainability and the global biodiversity uh, climate crisis in 2016. And then I, gave, I talked about the, in, in uh, uh, a few a couple years later, uh, the fourth turning and, and the state of the future. And in all of those talks, I, I talked about population and climate uh, disruption. And I, I got some feedback from, I guess, some of you uh, uh, 
that had heard previous talks, you said, well, he's probably just going to come and give us more uh, gloom and doom. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I sort of deal in reality. Anyway, whether the sixth massive species extinction event in Earth's history is already underway, or may still it may it stay it still may be debatable, but clearly something serious and tragic is happening. Uh, and I wanted to sort of head this off uh, with a quote from Aldo Leopold. Uh, the last word in ignorance is, is the man who says of an animal or plant, what good is it? The land mechanism as a whole is, is good when every part of it is good, whether we understand it or not. If the biota in the course of eons has built something that we like but do not know under, uh, that, that we do not understand, then who but a fool would discard seemingly useless parts? And the, the, quote, the really famous quote of uh, Elder Leopold is, to keep every cog and wheel is the first precaution of intelligent uh, tinkering. Um, <clears throat> As I indicated in the introduction, I, I've been involved with the Endangered Species Act uh, with, uh, in various roles uh, for a long, uh, long uh, uh, a, a major part of my career. And there's several you know, books uh, and, and references about the Endangered Species Act. And I'll just briefly review. Uh, the US Fish and Wildlife Service uh, uh, started uh, a, the, uh, in, the focus on endangered species. In, in 1966, they had uh, the uh, Endangered Species Preservation Act, which uh, really started uh, getting a list of, of uh, threatened and endangered species in the United States. And that was shortly uh, followed up with the Endangered Species Conservation Act, which actually broadened uh, uh, concern about endangered species to uh, international, uh, uh, the international dimension. And that last, that uh, 1969 act uh, called for a, uh, the development of the, uh, a treaty, uh, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna, the CITES. And uh, the, the Endangered Species Act of 1973 actually was enacted to, to uh, uh, approve that, that international treaty. The, the Endangered Species Act was designed to protect critically imperiled species from extinction as a consequence of economic growth and, and development unhampered by concern, uh, by concern and conservation. And the U.S. Uh, Supre uh, Supreme Court found that the plain intent of Congress in, en in enacting the Endangered Species, to Species Act was to halt and reverse the trend towards species extinction, whatever the cost. The Endangered Species Act, uh, the first act uh, in 1966, uh, included 14 mammals, 34 birds, six spe uh, species of reptiles and amphibians, and 22 species of fish. And uh, the biggest threat of these 78 species was the same threat as currently listed species, and that was habitat destruction. Preventing extinction and achieving recovery of listed species is one of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's highest priorities. <clears throat> and, and many of the, uh, these the first, the, the class of 1966 uh, endangered species, uh, they were involved, uh, or I became involved with many of those species uh, in my in my work. And uh, I'm going to go through a number of the species that that we worked on, uh, and I I'm, I'm not going to go drag you through all of the details here. But uh, for each of the species, I have uh, uh, listed the, the status of them, uh, the range, the threats, and the, the recovery. And uh, 
So I, and I also have included a picture of the, of the scientists that were involved in, in these species. Uh, and if you want to come back, if, if you want to discuss some of these species in more detail, uh, we can come back uh, later in the talk and, and, and review them. But uh, uh, one of the first species was the critical endangered Puerto Rican parrot, uh, and it, it, it had dwindled to 13 birds in the 1970s. And uh, uh, it's, it's now uh, on, on a recovery. Uh, the other species that we uh, had a, a long history with was the whooping, whooping crane. Uh, and uh, this was also, uh, uh, it's been endangered since 1967. And it was on the brink of extinction with only 21 wild birds in 1941. Um, <clears throat> one of the heroes in the, in the recovery of the uh, whooping crane was uh, the uh, gentleman in the lower left here, uh, Dr. Ray Erickson. And uh, he, uh, he really started most of the endangered species uh, research at, at Patuxent Wildlife Research Center and uh, uh, actually went to the uh, Wood Buffalo National Park and brought eggs to, to begin the propagation program uh, at Patuxent. Uh, and Glenn Olson <clears throat> carried on that work. Another one of the species that, that were, was early in, in the uh, work uh, at, at the Fish and Wildlife Service was uh, the gray wolf. Um, and it was ext ext extirpated throughout Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, except for a small population on Isle Royal and in, in uh, Lake Superior. Uh, and it was listed as, a, as an endangered species in 1964. Um, Dr. David Meach, you've probably heard of, of him, uh, is in the lower left there. Uh, he's been, uh, his whole career has been working on the wolf. Another species that we were deeply involved with at Patuxent was the bald eagle. And uh, it was, uh, it's, it's now been removed from the federal list of threatened and endangered species in, 19, in, in 2007. Uh, but it is a species that, uh, uh, was really on the brink of uh, uh, extinction in the United States because of uh, uh, DDT contamination. Another species, one of the mammals that was listed uh, back in the class of uh, uh, 1966 was uh, uh, 76 was uh, the black-footed ferret, and uh, it, it's been endangered since 1967. Uh, and uh, is uh, still critically endangered. Um, we started a propagation program at Patuxent uh, uh, and, and the, the captive breeding program and then reintroduced uh, these to the uh, prairies in, in, in the upper, uh, in the Great Plains. Another major species that we dealt with was the California condor, and it was a critically endangered, it still is, uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Noel Snyder uh, was involved with uh, the recovery of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, California condor, uh, but uh, we've had them in a captive breeding program since uh, 1991. Polar bear, was, uh, which is one of the uh, iconic uh, species, uh, uh, it, it was uh, listed. It's it's listed as vulnerable by the uh, International Union for Conservation of Nature, uh, and uh, S Steve Amster uh, was involved with uh, the uh, polar bear. And then we have. Uh, a uh, whole s suite of, uh, of uh, s species of birds, uh, the Hawaiian forest birds. Um, Hawaii's fauna is the most endangered in, in, on earth, 
and uh, there's about 24 uh, species of, of uh, these Hawaiian forest birds that uh, uh, we've been involved with uh, for many years. Another one of the Ho uh, Hawaiian species was the, uh, the, the world's rarest goose, uh, the, uh, the nene. Uh, and uh, it w it's the official bird of Hawaii. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Winston Banco was involved with the uh, captive prop propagation and recovery of uh, the nene. <clears throat> um, the peregrine falco, falcon was another species we worked on and the power, peregrine falcon was uh, endangered because of EDT uh, like the, the bald eagle and uh, Dr. Lucille Stickle who was the director at, uh, <coughs> and one of the uh, toxicologist uh, scientists at, at the Patuxent Wildlife Research Center um, and she actually rewrote the book on pesticides and wildlife was involved in the recovery of the peregrine falcon. Another species we worked on was the uh, mass bobwhite. And uh, we've got uh, Roy Tomlinson and, uh, and David Ellis uh, shown here. Uh, but this program was uh, begun in 1966 uh, in, with a captive propagation program. and. Uh, work in, uh, in the southwest United States. <clears throat> Another uh, species, one, one of my former students, uh, Carol Bocchetti, was involved with uh, the Kirtland's warbler, uh, which was endangered and, and, and uh, is now increasing. Um, but it was, uh, it's located, uh, uh, it was really restricted to a a small population in in the uh, upper upper uh, peninsula or uh, the lower peninsula of Michigan, um, but it's now spreading. Uh, there's a small population in Wisconsin. Another uh, species was the Aleutian can uh, cackling goose, and um, this was uh, really considered extinct uh, until a a small population was uh, found in the Aleutian Islands uh, on Boulder Island. And uh, uh, because of uh, the work that we did at Patuxent, uh, we've uh, uh, eliminated the depredations by the Arctic fox and, uh, and uh, also redu uh, controlled the uh, sport hunting. And, and this species has uh, you know, made a real comeback. Uh, uh, the, the, the heroes in, in the recovery of the, the uh, Aleutian cackling goose uh, were uh, lower, in the lower picture here is uh, Forrest Lee, who was, uh, did the captive propagation in, in, uh, in Jamestown, North Dakota, and then they uh, took the, uh, the, uh, the progeny uh, to the uh, islands uh, in, 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 in uh, Alaska. And, and then uh, Dr. Paul Springer was also involved with the recovery of, of, uh, of the Aleutian Canada goose. He uh, did, analyzed all the band recoveries and, and found that uh, where the, 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 the birds were uh, having a, a lot of hunting mortality. And uh, he uh, convinced the, uh, the Pacific Flyway to reduce the, the harvest so that uh, they wouldn't uh, be shooting the, these, uh, these geese and their migration. And uh, with the control of the hunting, uh, the population really made a real comeback. Another <clears throat> one of the species that was in that early class of uh, 1963 uh, 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 was, the, was the manatee. It was uh, a, it's been protected as an endangered species since 1966, um, but uh, it's uh, made a pretty good recovery. And then the uh, California sea otter, uh, the populations were declining and, and, and uh, 
it still remains uh, a, an endangered species. Um, and uh, and then uh, we did quite a bit of work on the Everglades snail kite, uh, listed as an endangered species in 1967. Uh, and uh, it's still uh, endangered in, in Florida. <clears throat> We worked on the uh, grizzly bear, which was uh, threatened in, uh, in, uh, under the Endangered Species Act in 1967, mm -hmm. or 1975, I'm sorry. Yeah, and uh, it uh, is, is still very controversial uh, in the uh, uh, Rocky Mountain region. Um, <coughs> Dr. Charles Schwartz was involved with uh, the work on the grizzly bear. <coughs> and then uh, lastly, uh, we have the dusky, dusky seaside sparrow. It was, pres it was, it's presumed extinct now, uh, but uh, Paul Sykes was involved with that work. Uh, and it, uh, it really had dwindled down to, uh, you know, uh, only a one, one, uh, male and, and a couple of females. So anyway, that's uh, a number of the species that I was involved with in one way or the other uh, while I was with the Fish and Wildlife Service. <coughs> um, I'm going to transition now to the fact that uh, uh, looking at this in a more global, broader scope, um, humans now dominate the planet so heavily that we are pushing wild animals and plants into oblivion. And uh, this is the, the Anthropocene, uh, the new ge geologic uh, epoch uh, that we're living in. And we are on the cusp of historic transformation. Our Earth is at the crossroads. For many, many years, we are driving the planet to the very brink. And this is not doom or gloom, it's reality. Humankind are causing an astonished, astonishing decline of wildlife populations and biological diversity, 60% over the last 40 years. We live in an age of rapid and unprecedented planetary change. A global great acceleration is causing loss of nature and biodiversity at an alarming rate and scale. Many scientists think our ever-increasing overconsumption and resulting demand for energy, land, and water is having a powerful impact on habitats and living species. <clears throat> Since 1950, uh, the uh, socioeconomic trends uh, uh, are part of this great acceleration, uh, great acceleration of our global trends, and you can see. Uh, these various parameters that uh, are, are really uh, vastly rising. Humans are now the most numerous big mammal on Earth, and the next in line are the animals that we've created through breeding to feed and service. Our planetary changes are on such a scale that one in five species is now threatened with extinction. It's roughly 1,000 times the natural rate of extinction. Since 1970, the world's wildlife populations have halved, and the carnage is not slowing, uh, and slowing down, driven by uncontrolled human overpopulation, unrestrained economic growth, and accelerating climate disruption. Humans now use more than half of the world's land for our food, cities, roads, and mining, and we also consume more than 40% of the planet's primary productivity, everything produced by plants and animals, and we control 75% of all fresh water. <clears throat> there have been a number of books uh, written about this problem, uh, and uh, Biodiversity in peril, uh, the uh, threatened and endangered species in the United States. Uh, there are currently 
1,662 uh, species. Uh, more than half are plants. Uh, and of the uh, animals, uh, which is where I'm going to be uh, concentrating today, um, we have, um, the, you can see this distribution here of reptiles and amphibians, birds, mammals, <coughs> fish, insects, arachnids, crustaceans, snails, clams, corals, um, a total of uh, 718 uh, species uh, of, of animals. Stable planetary systems have enabled modern human society to develop. Without healthy natural systems, scientists are asking whether continuing human development is possible. We can continue to need these natural resources to survive and thrive. What future benefits might we discover as we better understand our reliance on the natural systems? <clears throat> Biodiversity is not just nice to have. Our health, wealth, and food and security depend on biodiversity. From medical treatments to, to food production, biodiversity is critical to society and people's well-being. All our economic activity ultimately depends on nature's ecological services estimated to be around $125 trillion per year. Biodiversity, the planet's most valuable resource, is on loan to us from our children and grandchildren. What are the threats uh, and pressures? Um, over, uh, over exploitation and agricultural activities driven by our runaway consumption and overpopulation are still the dominant causes for current species loss. Land degradation seriously impacts 75% of the terrestrial ecosystems, uh, reducing the welfare of, of uh, billions of people at huge economic costs and insidious ecological damages. Soils, the critical, uh, critical to our food production security, are increasingly under threat from pervasive and unabated erosion and degradation. Pollution, sedimentation, habitat fragmentation, and, and destruction have caused catastrophic declines in freshwater diversity. Um, deterioration of water quality uh, is adversely, adversely impacting clams, crustaceans, and fishes. Something may prove even more devastating than a mass extinction of species. Uh, it's the full-scale winnowing of vast populations of Earth's invertebrates, vertebrates, and plants. Humanity is community, uh, committing a planetary ecocide in a wave of biological annihilation. <clears throat> the International Union for Conservation of Nature is an is a international membership organization composed of uh, government and civil society organizations. It provides uh, 1,300 public, private, and non-governmental organizations with the knowledge and tools to enable human progress, economic development, and nature conservation to take place together. It was created in 1948 and has evolved to the, to the world's largest and most diverse environmental network. The IUCN is a global authority on the status of the natural world and measures needed to safeguard it. Some 13,000 experts contribute to establishing the red list of, of, of threatened species. The IUCN red list of threatened species is the world's most comprehensive inventory of, of global conservation status of plant and animal species. It uses a set of criteria to evaluate the extinction risk of thousands of species and subspecies, and these criteria are relevant to all species in all regions of the world. 
With its strong scientific base, the IUCN Red List is recognized as the most authoritative guide to the, the status of biological diversity. More than 26,500 species are threatened with extinction. It's a disconcerting 27% of, of the assessed species. 40% of these are amphibians, 25% are mammals, and 14% are, are birds. And this is the, uh, the assessment here. More than half of the species that have been assessed are, are uh, critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, or near threatened. Scientists warn that we are entering the sixth mass extinction event on Earth, uh, on Earth's history, the worldwide annihilation of wildlife. Previous such events killed off the dinosaurs and were the result of cataclysmic uh, activities and uh, such as giant asteroid impacts or super volcanic eruptions. This one is down to us humans. If, as the conservation biologists have concluded, Earth is at the start of the sixth mass extinction, dramatic losses of larger animals are already imminent. Although there are Warning, there were warning signs for years about the plummeting insect populations worldwide and the extent uh, was not well understood until now. The greater concern is that more than 40% of insect species are declining and a third of them are endangered. The total mass of insects is falling at a, such a rate that they could, uh, could vanish altogether within the next century threatening the collapse of nature itself and the survival of, of mankind. A major consequence of, <clears throat> of the insect collapse were destroying our life support systems from the rainforests of Puerto Rico and California and, and dry forests of Mexico and Australia. Insect numbers are plunging 75% or 80% respectively since the 1980s. Butterflies, moths, beetles, bees, wasps are among the species most affected based on 73 reports around the world de detailing insect declines. This lack of insects has resulted in the virtual disappearance of birds, frogs, and lizards in ecologically sensitive areas. Earth's insects and bugs <clears throat> are the fundamental structural and functional foundations of the global food chains of many of, a, of the species <coughs> ecosystems, of the planet's <coughs> ecosystems. The crash of insect numbers and biodiversity uh, risk an ecological Armageddon. Habitat loss because of agriculture and urbanization along with pollution and climate change are the key reasons for rapid declines in insect species. Recent studies of insect decimation are hyper alarming because this is destroying the capacity, uh, allowing us to sustain our existence in the world uh, along with other life inhabiting the natural or, uh, world. The main cause of, <clears throat> cause of insect collapse is agricultural intensification, a rapid, rapidly global scale problem. This means elimination of all species of, and shrubs around fields, exposing plain, bare croplands are, are being treated with synthetic uh, fertilizers and pesticides. Insect populations are, have plummeted starting early in the 20th century and have accelerated in the 1950s and 60s. New insecticides are introduced in the last 20 years have sterilized soils, killing all of the grubs and lingering in the environment. Insects pollinate plants and recycle nutrients. They also serve as a crucial, crucial, crucial <coughs> food source for many species of birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. If this food source is taken away, all these animals fail to reproduce and starve to death. 
Most studies are on extinction. Most studies on extinction among species tend to focus on birds and mammals, but insects are underrepresented to be, despite their paramount importance in keeping ecosystems functioning. This is a collage of critically endangered insects. Currently, there are 197, uh, 195 species of critically endangered insects. The world's capacity to produce food is being threatened by humanity's failure to protect biodiversity. Pollinators such as bees, bumblebees, and butterflies provide essential services to three quarters of the world's crops. And over the past two decades, 20% of the Earth's vegetative surface has become less productive as farms, cities, and factories gobble up land and pump out chemicals. The foundations of our food supply systems are being debilitated as biodiversity and ecosystem services are for food production and agriculture are in decline. One of the first things scientists observed was a lack of butterflies. Other scientists had predicted that tropical insects having evolved in a very stable climate would be much more sensitive to a warming environment. There is no, no time like the present to ask what's going on out there causing the insect collapse. Meanwhile, the butterfly die-off is unfolding unabated with alarming speed. These are some pictures of some critically endangered butterflies. <clears throat> you probably heard about the uh, decline of the, the monarch butterfly. Uh, monarch butterflies' uh, numbers have plummeted 80% in California overwintering sites, uh, overwintering sites over the past year. And the, this is really bad news for the species because numbers have already declined, an estimated 97% since the 1980s. If all of mankind were to disappear, the world would regenerate back to the rich state of equilibrium that existed thousands of years ago. If, in, in, if insects were to vanish, the environment would collapse into chaos. We have 455 critically endangered fishes. The mounting threats to <clears throat> marine wildlife reveals that population numbers are, have declined by half since the 1970s with many species down 75%. A third of all fish stocks are overfished, and one in four species of cartilaginous fish, uh, sharks, rays, and skates, are living on the brink of extinction. Driving these trends are human actions from fish stocks over exploitation to resource depletion to coastal development and pollution to greenhouse gas emissions causing acid of ocean acidification and global warming. We have 196 species of critically endangered rock reptiles. And when there is a, and there is also a global uh, amphibian apocalypse. Many of the world's amphibians are suffering as, as an existential threat as an ancient skin-eating fungus that can wipe out entire forests of, of frogs is, is in a flash, flash. This fungus has driven more than 250 species of frogs, toads, and salamanders to extinction in, or near extinction over, all over the earth. Human activities have inadvertently spread this pathogen far and wide, leading to amphibian die-offs across the Americas, Africa, Europe, and, and Australia. We have 545 
species of critically endangered amphibians. <clears throat> Habitat loss, climate change, and disease are threatening all of these species. There are more than 7,650 species of amphibians, and the vast majority are frogs and to toads. Around 30% are threatened with extinction, which is more than which is more than the birds, 15%, uh, and mammals, 21%. There, there are at least 42% are declining, and as many as 159 are already extinct. We have 218 species of critically endangered birds. And 205 species of critically endangered mammals. Many of you are familiar, I'm sure, of the uh, uh, critically uh, endangered mammals. Uh, the so-called so charismatic uh, megafauna. Uh, and uh, I think many conservation organizations use these uh, species as their flagships uh, because uh, we won't save what we, we don't love. Hawaii is often called the extinction capital of the world. Obviously, this is not a good thing. Species are dying out at an alarming weight rate, sadly, because this is not a, this is not a new phenomenon. <clears throat> Back in the seventh century, when the Polynesians first arrived, they brought with them pigs, chickens, dogs and plants that were in, that endangered endemic, endemic plants and, and wildlife. And the, the 18th century was, has just uh, caused, uh, has been catastrophic for, for two reasons. The natives began clear-cutting forests and the arrival of the uh, Europeans. The 20th century saw large population growth in, in Hawaii and the tourism industry has boomed. Today, though Hawaii makes up only a less than uh, 0.25, uh, 25 percent of the United States landmass, it holds 25 percent of the, of the endangered species. Prior to the arrival of humans in the, in the Hawaiian archipelago, the island supported an incredibly diverse and unique Ava fauna, fauna comprised of at least 113 endemic species. These species range from flightless geese, ibis, and red rails to one of the most famous cases of adaptive radiation, the Hawaiian honey creepers, of which at least 59 species have been described. Hawaii also has the unfortunate distinction as one of the epicenters of, of extinction of its species. Since human colonization, 71 birds have been confirmed lost, 48% prior to the arrival of the Europeans, and 23 since Captain King Cook first arrived in 1778. Of the 42 Xing, uh, existing endemic taxa, 31% are federally listed, but 10 of these have not been observed for as many as 40 years and are, are of unknown status. Of the uh, 1,662 uh, species of endangered and threatened species in the United States, nearly a third live in Hawaii, 501 species. This has nearly doubled the next highest state as California, which has 301. North Dakota has only nine. Many of the Hawaii's listed species are animals, ranging from several different native bee species to the Hawaiian green sea turtle. But the vast majority are plants, and plants generally get less attention and more 
uh, therefore less money than wildlife. Hawaii may be uniquely disadvantaged among states, but many conservationists say that the larger issue is that there simply isn't enough money to go around. Excuse me, Dick, I, I think my battery went. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if the battery went dead. Let's see if it can start off. The data lights on. I have no so. idea. We're going to have to speak up a little more. Okay. <laughs> What kind of battery does it take? Uh, it's an internal charging thing. I think it needs to be on a USB. Uh, what kind of species is it? Lithium ion. Anyway, in 2016, the Center for Biological Diversity estimated it would cost about $2.3 billion a year to implement recovery plans for every federally listed, listed species. It's interesting that, uh, you know, we're going to do about uh, uh, $9 billion for our wall. wall. Yeah. Uh, Keep it moving. So. Which will cause more extensions. <laughs> Which will cause more. Uh, but anyway, that year the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service received just uh, $82 million for recovery efforts, roughly 3% of the estimated uh, need. The key threats to the remaining species uh, include habitat destruction and degradation by humans and introduced in, uh, un ungulates, non-native diseases and predators, uh, feral, cat, uh, feral cats, barn owls, rats, and mongoose, and, and habitat-altering invasive species. Non-native mosquitoes are vectors for avian pox and avian malaria, both of which have had devastating effects on the forest bird populations, which have evolved without these, uh, without these threats. Thus, most of Hawaii's existing forest species are restricted to high elevation forests above 1,400 meters or remote islands where mosquitoes are limited by temperature or absent altogether. Managing and researching field, uh, field conditions and the need for ongoing management of birds in these areas represent many logistical challenges and, and expenses. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service lists the Maui parrot bird as one of the most critically endangered birds in the country. And there are only two federally ranked species in the United States, and they are both in Hawaii. The Maui parrot bird is the species with only a few hundred individuals left in the wild. The other number one ranked critically endangered species is the uh, Hawaii and the most recent uh, surveys estimated the population is between 200 and 300 individuals. Some of the Hawaii forest, uh, I mean, Hawaii endangered birds. Uh, and as you can see, there's uh, they're quite diverse uh, hawks and owls and ducks and, and uh, seabirds. Uh, and some more of the species of endangered species in Hawaii. <coughs> In terms of global biodiversity trends, uh, since uh, the 1970s, uh, we are in a down, downward slide. Um, and this is based on the surveys that have been done by the uh, uh, IUCN. We have uh, extinct uh, and extinct in the wild 732 species. 
critically endangered species, which I showed the pictures of earlier, of, of 1,814 species. In addition, there are beyond the critically endangered, we have uh, 3, 000, over 3,000 endangered species and over 4,000 are vulnerable. The collapse of our current way of life is, is happening now. The signs are all around us. Our challenge is to notice them, inquire about them, think of critically about them and their implications and understand their, their ramifications going forward in the future. The ecosystems on which we depend for life are vanishing as insects, plants, and animals are becoming threatened, extirpated, endangered, and extinct. Humans now dominate the plan and we are causing the extinction event that threatens not only just the species we like, but those that do, we depend upon for the well-being and survival. The future may not be as certain as we used to think it might be, and it surely will be a lot less interesting, colorful, beautiful, productive, and sustainable. <clears throat> and how bad is it? Extremely. By some measures, the biodiversity crisis is even deeper than that of the climate change. Since the dawn of civilization, humanity has caused the loss of 83% of, of wild mammals, at least uh, in the last 50 years alone. Populations of mammals, birds, reptiles, and fish have fallen by 60%. <coughs> Back in uh, 2003, I uh, chaired a committee with the, for, the, uh, for the Wildlife Society looking at uh, the relationship of economic growth to wildlife conservation. And at that time, we, we looked at uh, the uh, correlation and the relationship of GDP in billions of dollars in relation to the uh, listed threatened and endangered species. And you see that we have a highly significant uh, statistical correlation uh, coefficient uh, uh, with, uh, with that. And um, since 20, uh, 2003, I've updated the information uh, with the uh, from that earlier publication and uh, as you can see we have continued to have a very strong relationship between economic growth and species endangerment <clears throat> and the reason this is is, is that uh, uh, the proportion of nat natural capital is allocated to non human habitats is decreasing with G GNP because of the uh, competitive exclusion uh, uh, principle of eco ecology and the expansion of the human enterprise. So as the, uh, the amount of natural cap capital is allocated to the human econ economy with uh, increasing GDP, uh, it's forcing out uh, the species. And this is the, uh, the uh, humanity's ecological footprint uh, as documented uh, uh, by the uh, World Wildlife Fund. And this one assumes that the world's biocapacity is constant, but actually uh, if you look at it more critically, uh, the uh, ecological, the biocapacity is actually declining as, as we uh, expand our ecological footprint. This is a good 
good news, bad news uh, graph because uh, as we have learned, the annual growth of, of world human population is declining, but uh, world population is continuing to increase, um, and uh, we're looking to exceed 11 billion by uh, the turn of this coming century. And the correlation between uh, human population and the increasing number of extinction is, is very uh, profound. So is anyone paying attention to the unprecedented ecological crisis? Does anyone even care about this horrific environmental disaster? Um, scientists worldwide are trying to unravel the many factors underlying species collapse. And the pace of global climate change and disruption is accelerating relentlessly and becoming more pervasive. Ultimately, the size of human population and how much land is used for food, energy, and other goods is con it consumes will determine how much wildlife is lost. The parade of ecological bad news is both endless and worsening. <clears throat> Our principal concern must be an honest understanding about humanity's role in the acceleration of natural, uh, the alternation of natural ecosystems and the extinction of species and recognition of that of that reality that there may be no real prospect for us to fix things in time to avoid substantial impairment of the bio, bio, biosphere the damage already done cannot be repaired with any time period that has any meaning for the human mind E.O. Wilson said it said it like this, the one process going on now that will take millions of years to correct is the loss of genetic and species diversity by the destruction of natural habitat. This is the folly of our descendants are least likely to forgive us. <clears throat> Aldo Leopold, uh, one of my heroes, said that one of the penalties of an ecological education is that one lives alone in a world of wounds. And Sir David Attenborough said, we are a plague on the earth. Either we limit our population growth or the natural world will do it for us. Mm -hmm. So, here's the committee, ecological ecocide. So that's my presentation. Yeah. Thank you very much for the work that you do. I admire particularly your work on uh, endangered species uh, protection 